Well guys, welcome back. It's a beautiful morning out here in central Ontario, Canada. My name's Sandy. This is Sawing with Sandy. Just a minute ago, you guys saw me load some logs up onto my log deck. That right there is some balsam fir that came down in a bit of a windstorm that we tend to have all the time around here. That came down on one of my trails. You may have seen a video recently where I was winching that out. Well, now I'm gonna complete the process of going from tree to lumber. We're up here at my sawmill, as I said, in order to mill those pieces into lumber. Uh, just a moment ago, you also saw me loading up the lumber, or soon to be lumber. You saw me loading it up with my grapple. That is my go-to for loading logs. I like it a little bit better than using forks. I have used forks before, but I just don't have that precise control. Um, maybe if I was a better operator, I could use the forks better, but that's another story. This is the 66-inch uh, HLA light duty root rake with grapple. It's a mouthful. This thing is hooked up to my rear remotes on my tractor through these long cables or uh, hydraulic lines rather. You guys can see them running here. Here's the connection and then they run up along my loader underneath the cab and then they plug in at the back of my tractor. So that allows me to control the grapple with a joystick inside my cab. Makes life a lot easier. Uh, as I said, it's a little bit more control for me. So loaded those up nicely and now we'll get down to cutting. Now, if you haven't seen my sawmill before, that probably means you're brand new to the channel, so welcome. This is it. Uh, this right here is a, don't even know the year, I think it's a 2022. It's pretty much brand new to me, uh, HM130 Max. I got it, oh, probably six, seven, eight months ago. I've been running it ever since. This is a little bit different than many sawmills you've probably seen before, if you've seen this model, because this has two lasers on it. This right here is one laser, and that right over there is another laser. That allows me to cast a laser line on my logs, as you'll see, and gives me a little bit more of an idea where the blade's gonna make my first few cuts. We'll get that into action today. We're also gonna be using the power up and down feature, which uh, is new to me as well, and that thing is a arm saver for sure. So let's get things fired up here. We got some nice fur, and we'll see what we end up making. Before I do that though, and before I forget, I gotta get a new blade on there. That thing was getting dull last time, and better, uh, Get it touched up nice and sharp before we cut some lumber. Guys, welcome back. And just as I'm about to fire up the sawmill, I want to address one question that comes through quite a bit. And that question is, is the standard length woodland mill sawmill, which you can see in front of you, is that long enough for most cutting? The answer to that is yes. You can cut 10 foot and under material. So your typical eight foot stud, maybe 10 foot long lumber. But if you get any more than 10 foot, you're gonna to have to bump up with one bed extension. I have had both sawmills. I've had the shorter version or the standard version length. I've also, on my old sawmill, which used to live in there, I had one additional bed extension. Now the extension allowed me to cut, I believe, up to about 16 foot 11 inches, if I'm not mistaken. Look it up just to be sure. But with this thing, I can only cut up to about 10 feet. Now this log here, this log is 10 foot one and a half inches, give or take 10 foot two inches. If we have a look at how it's placed, it looks good up here, but that's because I positioned it perfectly. At this end, Look at the distance between the blade and the start of the start of the log. There's very little distance, right? And that's considering I've pushed the sawmill all the way to the back of the sawmill bed. On this end, 
you can see here, that's where the log ends up. Now the actual blade stops cutting very, very close to here. I think with this setup, just your standard length sawmill, I think you can cut like 10 foot, four inch material. This being close to 10 foot, two inches, this is about all it's gonna cut. You gotta have perfect alignment of logs when you're at this maximum length. That's one of the downsides of not having a bed extension. When I had the bed extension, it didn't really matter per se, because if the log was a little bit too far down or a little bit too far this way, it didn't matter because I still had room to play with. Not to mention you can also cut longer logs. So my uh, preference is definitely to have one additional bed extension. I think at some point I'm gonna look at uh, adding that to this sawmill. For now though, it does a great job of 10 foot and under material, but down the road, you might wanna have uh, one extension on there if at all possible. You guys see that? I tell you, it's kind of crazy. Uh, last time I was out here, you guys were, if you were checking out this video, you would have seen that the squirrels put the exact same uh, stuff here as they did this time. But they came back after I removed it the first time and have a look now, they filled it right up. I'm a bit scared to look in this other side here. I'm sure it's equally full, but that's kind of wild. It hasn't been that long since I cleared this out and sure enough, they're back here persistent little critters aren't they i don't know if it's the red squirrels actually i think it's the red squirrels that are doing it they're a bit of a headache around here all right so they're not over here probably because of that opening but kind of crazy and uh that's going to be a good reminder for me i got to be diligent here if i if i'm not diligent you guys could imagine me starting up my sawmill would have definitely kicked off the uh, blade and well could have caused some damage anyways i opened her up just for a little check and i also want to change the blade here that's exactly what we're going to do so if you guys are ever wondering how often i change the blade i don't film blade changes all the time but i often will f i will often uh, change the blade after like I don't know, maybe a good four or five hours of solid cutting. Or if I start cutting and I notice there's some resistance or I'm starting to get some waves in the lumber, I'll, I'll go right ahead, I'll change the blade and that ends up uh, making for a better experience. Gee. You know, it's interesting as well. I'm looking here on the ground. I think what happened was the red squirrels, they took these... Uh, they took these pine cones, the ones that I knocked on the ground initially, and instead of me getting rid of the pine cones, I left them there. I think they just picked them up and put them back and then added to them. Okay. Guy's probably up here sitting in my sawmill shack looking at me. Anyways. There we go. We'll get this thing sharpened up another day. Get a fresh one on. All right, guys. Well, here's my brand new blade. And I know you're going to say, hey, there's rust on there. It's not brand new. It is actually brand new. Uh, it's been sitting out here at the sawmill. It is undercover. But um, it can potentially get a little bit of surface rust. I don't wipe it off. Some people do. I just throw it on there. I cut a log. And next thing you know, this, the surface rust is gone. These blades are the ones that Woodland Mill sells. I think um, they come in 10 packs. I believe they're made by Lennox, but don't quote me on that one. I've been using them for years and had good success with them. There are other brands out there. I just haven't had a chance to try them out. So it's one of those things, uh, you know, I've been having good luck with this, so just keep doing it. Anyways, we'll get this put on here. And before I do that, I'm just going to make sure the belt is clean. Get rid of these guys. And usually, I'll have the blower out here, my backpack blower, and I'll just give this a good clean roo in here. But I don't have it handy here. I was using it for something different. And for those of you who are wondering, I know I get this question uh, quite a bit. Is this belt here on the follower band wheel supposed to be loose? Absolutely. It actually tells you right here on the sticker. And you'll notice this is disconnected now too. The temperatures are below zero here uh, in Ontario, Canada. And so I actually drained my lubrication tank. 
there's nothing in there. I am not going to be cutting with lubrication. Um, oftentimes I will put uh, windshield washer fluid into the lubrication tank if I need it. But at this point, the logs are pretty green. And because they're pretty green, there'll be a lot of moisture. There'll be a lot of moisture in the logs still. And that should, uh, should be adequate. I'm just putting the blade so it's flush with the back of the band wheel for now just so we're close and then I can uh, add the tension back looks good to me I'm just doing a visual here to check the gap between the uh, the guide blocks here I want to make sure there's just a little bit of a gap between the top guide block and the top of the blade, bottom guide block and the bottom of the blade. You definitely don't want to rub in there. Looks good to me. I think we're in good shape. All right, guys, let's go ahead and we're going to add 25 foot pounds of torque here. And I'm using my trusty torque wrench for that. So there's 25 foot pounds. And I've been, I'm using 25 foot pounds because I've always used 25 foot pounds. It's one of those things, if it works, continue doing it. And that's sort of my mentality. My previous sawmill was an HM130, which is the precursor to this. I ran 25 foot pounds for years, didn't have any issues. I started doing that here and it's worked out pretty good. And so I figure until it isn't working good, I'll keep doing it. Okay. All right, let's do a little uh, rotation here. And we'll just, uh, what I'm doing as I rotate it, I'm just going to watch the band, the uh, saw blade. Just going to make sure it's staying where it should be on the band wheels. And if I start to notice the blade drifting forward or drifting too far back, that's when I stop rotating it. All right, let's just do a check here. It's actually quite good there. Now in this case, I'm looking to have the, the, uh, the blade overhang the same amount on the front as the back. And so if I look at the gullet of the tooth, there should be a bit of a space there. That space should match the space of the overhang on the back. It tells you all this in the manual. That actually feels quite good there so I think we're gonna run it I got lucky there every once in a while you put a new blade on and the alignment um, doesn't work like the previous blade so you got to adjust the follower uh, follower band wheel not this case we're good to go start cutting here we go all right here we go on on let's go I just turn off the choke immediately and it tends to run real good that's a cold start, can't complain there. All right, let her warm up. And some people are gonna ask me about fuel as well. I typically, if I can, I'll run non-ethanol fuel. However, I don't always do that. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I use whatever's in the jerry can, whatever I have most of. I live out in the woods, it's an effort to go get fuel, so.
Well guys, another fun day out here at the sawmill. I got some lumber cut, took care of some logs from a blow down. All in all, the equipment ran good. Can't ask for too much more. Now I'm gonna be back out here real soon. I gotta get this cleaned up a little bit. I know some of you guys are watching and you're saying to yourself, gee, that guy could sure use a little tidying and that's completely true if we look around here. I've got projects that have been carried over for months and months and months and I gotta take care of it. When I moved my original sawmill, which was up there, when I moved it out and then I moved this shed and then I got this sawmill here, well, I haven't really buttoned up the loose ends yet. So I gotta take care of that before long. If you uh, let those projects, those small tidying projects go too long, as many of you know, they turn into uh, permanent fixtures and I don't exactly like it looking like this. So that's gonna do it for me here today, guys. I appreciate all the support out there, especially those of you who have picked up one of these slick new hats I've got. If you are interested in uh, checking out these hats down below in this video, you'll see a bit of a banner. Otherwise, uh, regardless of whether you get a hat or not, I appreciate the support. You guys all take care, get out there, do some sawing if you can even get outside, breathe some fresh air and make sure you don't let anyone tell you you can't do this because this right here, it's not exactly rocket science. And I'm sure with a little bit of practice, anyone can uh, you know put some dust on their shoulders and make some beautiful lumber like I did. Guys, take care, be well, see you next time.